Good morning, it's June 17th. We're reading through the Bible in a year. Our Old Testament reading today is found in Nehemiah chapters four, five, and six. We see in chapter six, the completion of these walls in a miraculous 52 day building project it was an amazing uh, period of time. But in chapter four, we see the great opposition. We've already touched on a lot in the first few chapters, but now we have Sanballat and Tobiah, these two, um, uh, opponents to the work of God, to opponents to the will of God, and there's a lot that has to be done for them to protect themselves from all that these uh, opponents are stirring up against the work on the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, verse number 18, for instance, in chapter 4 shows us how they had to strap a sword onto their belts, these workers. They were just normal people building the walls, and uh, they're building with one hand, you know, and they've got a sword dangling off their hip on the other side of their body. It's just uh, an amazing scene of having to work hard with vigilance and a mind to defend the work that's being done here. Uh, chapter 5, uh, there's needs now internally. You got a lot of opposition from the outside. In chapter 4, now we have uh, problems on the inside. It reminds me of the reading in Acts that we're going to get to soon where the Hellenistic Jews are uh, upset about not getting their provisions every day. The, the widows were in particular in Acts 6 and the same kind of thing here. We've got problems going on and people not being fed and so Nehemiah has to turn his leadership skills within the church here to make sure that things are dealt with. And his great generosity in his own personal life uh, brings him the integrity that he needs to lead the people to get them to be the kinds of generous people to care for each other as they ought to. Chapter 6, as I said, an amazing response of God through the people to build that wall in 52 days. First half of that chapter, we see uh, Nehemiah having to defend the work, the letter that is written. Uh, you can read about it where they basically have to say what you're saying about this work is nonsense. Sometimes we just have to call people out and say, your accusation against us is ridiculous. And that's exactly what, exactly what Nehemiah says. You're making this up in your head. This is foolish and ridiculous. And so he calls the people to the work. They finish the work and God is honored by the building of the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. Our New Testament reading is in the second half of Acts chapter 2, where Peter starts preaching. He uses Joel 2 as the text to proclaim that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And of course, previously in that book and in that uh, passage that he's quoting about the Spirit being poured out on the people, which has just happened here in Acts chapter 2, and uh, we've seen the birth of the church, and this passage in Joel is the platform to lead Peter to preach about Christ and the culpability of the people in their sin against Christ. And it's not just that they were the ones that actually pinned him to the cross, but their sins were. And so we have been a part of that as well because we're part of the sinful humanity that uh, Christ had to come and die for, chose to come and die for. So now uh, this passage is one that's biting and, and, and stinging and it stings them. They have to cry out as they're cut to the heart and they say, what must we do? And he calls them to repentance and obedience and we see that in our text. And then it ends with a great reminder of how the community of believers work together to encourage one another, to meet needs, uh, the devotion that they have, just a great scene of what the community of believers should be all about, even though this is a unique contextual and historical situation. Our community imperative today comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let me read it for you. Ephesians 4, 29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. What a great contrast between words of grace, words of favor, words that bring people to a place of greater strength in their Christian life. It's this word, um, the old word, the old translation was edification. It's a building term. It's a structure that's being put into place brick by brick. And in this context, sentence by sentence, phrase by phrase, conversation by conversation, people are being stronger in their faith and stronger in their lives as they are obedient and loving God and loving each other. And our words ought to feed that, our, our words ought to to fuel that. Our words ought to bring them in that direction, as opposed to let no corrupting talk. Uh, the root of this Greek word, we get the word septic from it, just something that is rotten or putrid or, or bad or corrupting, translated here, the corrupting talk. And so we need to make sure that our words today, I'll put it this way, our community imperative, speak words that build others up. Speak words that build others up. And if you think in terms of, are my words going to be helpful? It's a lot of seemingly passive, neutral words that don't do much. And then there's those words that do good. They're positive 
positive words. And I like, in one respect, the fact that we can text each other because we can be thoughtful about what we send, even though we're not always, we ought to be, we ought to think about these words, whether they're gonna be good words, they're gonna be helpful words. I know the tongue, as it says in James, like a restless you know, uh, uh, fire, like a poison, like a restless, undomesticated animal. We have gotta be careful what we say. And as Christians, we ought to be purposeful and thoughtful to give grace to those who hear, building them up, not corrupting talk, not talk that's gonna tear them down. Doesn't mean we always tell them what they wanna hear. We're not about flattery, but we're about words that are gonna help build them up in Christ and make them strong Christians. So speak words that build each other up. There's your community imperative for the day. We'll get back to our Bible reading tomorrow.